With 11 historic lighthouses on its islands and shores, Door County is home to one of the highest concentrations of these beautiful beacons in the entire United States. Come along as we count down the top 11 things you probably didn't know about Door County's historic lighthouses. Going from oldest to newest, at number 11, we have the Potawatomi Lighthouse located on Rock Island, which is as far north as you can get in Door County. The first lighthouse built at this location was constructed in 1836, a full 12 years before Wisconsin even became a state. Unfortunately, the construction was found to be a bit shoddy, so in 1858, the Lighthouse Service built a new lighthouse in the very same spot, and this one has stood the test of time, and it's the one that you can see today. In 1870, William Betts, a Civil War veteran, was appointed Keeper of Potawatomi Lighthouse, and 17 months later, the 38-year-old bachelor married 16-year-old Emily Ron, daughter of Victor Ron, the keeper of nearby Pilot Island Lighthouse. With a 22-year age difference, I can't imagine they shared the same taste in music, but apparently, they did more than trim the wick on that lighthouse, as they also found time to raise nine kids in their 16 years on that island. And finally, it's haunted. Strange noises have been noted in the lighthouse, as well as doors opening and closing and things going thump in the night. Some believe the spirit of the first lightkeeper tromps around on the second floor. There are also reports of children playing on the grounds around the lighthouse. Spooky. At number 10, we have a real odd duck when it comes to lighthouses. The Bailey's Harbor Birdcage Lighthouse was built in 1853 and used a unique birdcage design for its lantern room. Unique might be another way of saying ineffective, as the birdcage style was soon replaced by a more robust design. What's even more interesting about this lighthouse is that it was built in the wrong place. The lighthouse board recognized that it actually led mariners into a reef on the east side of Bailey's Harbor instead of away from danger. Because of this, the board recommended building a new set of ranged lights in Bailey's Harbor as well as Cana Island Lighthouse in 1869. Hey, we all make mistakes, right? Unfortunately for us, this lighthouse is privately owned and not open to the public. At number 9 is Pilot Island Lighthouse, built in 1858. You would think this lighthouse is the most lonely lighthouse in all of Door County, with its three and a half acres of bare rock jutting out of some of the most dangerous waters in the Great Lakes. It seems improbable that it was actually a lively social hub, hosting picnics and even a wedding. Even more interesting is the fog signal, which was reported to be the loudest on the Great Lakes. It was so loud that mariners could hear it up to 40 miles away. That's two-thirds the way to Michigan. A visitor to the island in 1890 noted that all the kerosene lamps in the station were suspended from the ceiling by strings to prevent the vibrations of the fog signal from extinguishing their flames. It was further reported, yet unsubstantiated, that eggs laid by the keeper's chickens never hatched, since the vibrations of the foghorns scrambled their contents in the shell. Pilot Island remains one of the most isolated of Door County's lighthouses and is off limits to visitors. Located in Peninsula State Park, number 8 is Eagle Bluff Lighthouse, built in 1868. In the late 1800s, lighthouse keeper Willem Duclan and his wife Julia raised seven kids at Eagle Bluff. What made this large brood unique was their musical talents, as the whole family would eventually become known locally as the Duclan Orchestra, playing at weddings and parties throughout Northern Door. In 1960, the lighthouse was restored as a museum which you can visit today. At number 7 is the Chambers Island Lighthouse also built in 1868, and also looking a whole lot like Eagle Bluff Lighthouse just across the Strawberry Channel. The lighthouses are identical, though some savvy sailors will notice a subtle disparity in the light towers, with Chambers being octagonal and Eagle Bluff being square. Get this, it's haunted. In the spring of 1976, a caretaker reported a loud noise that sounded like footsteps coming down the tower staircase, continuing on through the living room kitchen and ending with a click as the kitchen door closed. While staying at the lighthouse for renovations, workers reported tools appearing in unlikely places and beds being shaken as if by a mighty unseen pair of hands. Many believe this was the ghost of former keeper Lewis Williams. Coming in at number 6 on the countdown are the Bailey's Harbor Range Lights, otherwise known as the lighthouses that fix that old birdhouse light problem that would lead ships into peril. Mariners would line up the two new range lights to guide them into safe refuge instead of washing up on that pesky reef on the other side of the harbor. It could be said that the Bailey's Harbor Range Lights hosted the most eligible lighthouse keeper in all of Door County. In 1896, Henry Gaddy became the new keeper and apparently was quite the catch. He was so popular that his name and social doings appeared often in the newspaper society column. By 1901, he married Bailey's Harbor local Ava Hendrick. And wouldn't you know it, the Duclan Orchestra played their wedding. Guests who partied into the wee hours expressed regret that the Gaddys wouldn't be getting married at least once a month. Built in 1869, 
Cana Island Lighthouse is number five. The entire complex was built with cream-colored Milwaukee brick. Even the tower. Even the tower, you say? In the late 1870s and early 1880s, several very dramatic storms flooded the area around the lighthouse with water several feet deep. At other times, waters flooded the cellar and ran through the kitchen. During the famous Alpena Gale in 1880, storm waves actually swept through the house. Legend has it, the spray from the crashing waves drenched the lantern room atop the 75-foot tower. Because of this, brickwork began to deteriorate, and in 1902, the lighthouse board encased the tower in steel plates. At number four is the Sturgeon Bay Ship Canal North Pierhead Light, originally built in 1882. The current iteration is vastly different from the original. It all started as a simple 29-foot tall metal frame tower with a sixth order Fresnel lens. But within four years, due to its critical role to navigation, the light was upgraded to its current 43-foot tall red structure, which included a foghorn and keeper's quarters. Before the upgrade, Lighthouse keepers lived on a barge anchored offshore from the light. This lighthouse isn't open to the public, but on calm days, you can walk the breakwater to get a closer look. Sherwood Point Lighthouse, located west of Sturgeon Bay, was the last lighthouse with a lighthouse keeper on the Great Lakes. By 1983, all others had been automated. Another interesting piece of trivia is that Sherwood Point is the only lighthouse in Door County built out of red brick instead of limestone or cream-colored brick. And oh my gosh, you guessed it, it's haunted. In 1889, Keeper William Cokums married Minnie Hesh. She was later named an assistant keeper, and in 1928, she suffered a stroke and died while getting out of bed in an upstairs bedroom. Visitors have reported hearing noises at night, including voices and the clinking of teacups. Others have seen a presence on the staircase. Maybe you can catch a glimpse during one of the rare opportunities this lighthouse is open for tours, once a year for the Door County Maritime Museum's Lighthouse Festival weekend. Death's Door can be a pretty sketchy place to sail a ship, and when mariners complained that Pilot Island Light wasn't cut in the mustard, the lighthouse board responded by investing $21,000 to develop range lights on Plum Island in 1897. That's over $700,000 in today's currency, making it the most expensive and expansive lighthouse facility in Door County. Why is it called Plum Island? Because it's plum in the middle of Death's Door, which makes it a very serious hazard to navigation. Currently, Plum Island is open for exploration during daylight hours, from Memorial Day through Labor Day. Last, but not at all least, is the Sturgeon Bay Ship Canal Light. Cana Island Lighthouse is often thought to be Door County's tallest lighthouse, but it is in fact 11 feet shorter than the Sturgeon Bay Ship Canal Light built in 1899. Rising to a height of 98 feet, the double-walled steel cylinder was originally freestanding, with four 16-foot buttresses supporting the structure. This proved to be so unstable that in 1903, a steel skeletal framework was installed to prevent the lighthouse from violently vibrating, which previously was so terrible that the light's timing mechanism was unable to rotate the lens properly. So now you know 11 crazy amazing facts about Door County's incredibly historic lighthouses. 